How's it going, Internet? I hope you are having a wonderful day today. It is time to do some animation, time to get into creating, into uh, some imagination and some inspiration and talk about the creative process as a whole. Uh, so with that being said, today's inspiration comes from the amazing, one of the best nine old men, one of my favorites, one of the really Push, pushing cartoons to a new level uh, animators and that's uh, Ward Kimball and if you're not familiar with his stuff usually if there's a very uh, energetic cartoony character in a Disney movie of the classics usually Ward Kimball is behind those um, as you can see here I just grabbed a little clip off of YouTube which I will link in the information below if you want to check it out um, to some of uh, his animation and he's just great the way that he can master really pushing poses and really pushing timing and squash and stretch and all this just to add that extra level of energy and life to his characters is great um, so that being said I grabbed a couple of little quotes kind of anecdotal stories um, that are attributed to him that I thought I'd share with you as well. Animation is very is very slow when you're an actor. You depend on spontaneity in a scene, and it's hard to work up spontaneity when you're doing separate drawings. The faster you work, the more spontaneity. And that was one of the secrets of the early Ferguson animation drawings. He could draw almost as fast as he could think. And I brought that up because I this is one of the things that I had talked to um, some of my teachers about when I was going to school. And that was, um, I used to do some acting and stuff back uh, a while ago, and uh, nothing super professional or anything, but I, I always liked more of the improv stuff and everything, and so I, I, I uh, presented with one of my teachers, you know, where, where, how does that play into animation? And they really, you know, more, more or less like the straight, straight ahead method of um, animation, which is just like start at the beginning of your scene and end at the end, rather than doing key poses and everything, that there's some spontaneity in that, um, but it, it's kind of a little too planned out, which is kind of the way that I like to approach these videos, is to try and get a level of spontaneity and go with the flowedness of animation because I really feel that there's not a lot in features and in games and stuff that has that level of, well, let's try this out or let's give this a shot. And the, the thing with doing that approach, though, is that it's... You might not always get as successful or as polished a shot as if you're really doing, you know, this is key here and this is the acting beat we want to hit here and this is what it is. But I feel like there's a little bit more life to um, the spontaneity, even if it's a little, has some crustier edges. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below about that, because it's something that I'm still kind of toying around with, but I think it's something that I really like to see more of in animation but it's a hard medium to get that in so let me know what you think in the information and in the comments below and then the other um, quote was I thought I thought Pinocchio was harder for everybody than Snow White we finished Snow White and we said ha we can do features and everyone went into Pinocchio with this great load of confidence boy six months later we found out and Walt found out that what you learn in one picture doesn't necessarily work in the next picture. And I thought that that was a great um, way to, to look at animating shots. And I really think, especially just when we're doing uh, mainly sticking kind of with walks, occasionally we'll do more like storytelling kind of uh, shorts, but um, you kind of want to have like a, a basic foundation of understanding the principles and understanding kind of uh, where you want to go with something. But just because this idea and this approach worked in this shot doesn't mean that the next rig that you use or the next you know a animation uh, idea that you come up with that you can pull elements from one and the other. It doesn't always work, even if theoretically that character should be able to move this way or that you know the camera angle might be off or the way the character is rigged might be different so you have to adjust to that or you know the time that you have to get this move done might be less time than, than you need for it so you have to kind of um, going back to a couple of videos ago um, use the James Baxter method of put a bucket in front of it and just make it work 
All right. Well, now I've rambled on for so long, let's get into today's animation. And if you're not familiar with this series, what we kind of do is uh, pull up a rig. I've only barely used this rig before. Normally I say I've never used it before, but a couple days ago I attempted using this brute version of um, the Zombination rig, but there were a couple of little geometry um, things that, that were kind of throwing me off a little bit, so I ended up switching to a different one, and you can check that out in the Zombination video, which is probably about four or five videos back. Um, but what was great is uh, Reanimator, I think if I have it right here, yeah, the Reanimator over here, right there. Uh, actually contacted me and he's the the person behind this rig and uh, he fixed up a couple of those things and sent me a new version of the rig and said you know go try it out see what you can do and I thought that was amazing so I wanted to give a special shout out and a thanks um, to him on Twitter and definitely go and follow him seems like a great guy and really supportive um, for the animation and more the indie animation and uh, learning animation community um, so I thought that was just really great, and, and kudos and props to him. So I told him that I would do um, a video using um, that rig now that that was all up. So I hope that you guys enjoy this, and um, I don't know if he put this uh, version of the rig up yet on their site, but I will link to their site as well down below. So if um, you can at least use the older version, um, and I'm sure they'll update it, uh, the newer version as well. But anyways, um, so this is Maya 2014, and what we do with this series is give ourselves anywhere from... 45 minutes to about two hours depending on the rig depending on the idea uh, depending on if we come into struggles or anything like that and give ourselves 48 frames and just see what we can come up with and try and get a little bit of that spontaneity that I really feel isn't out there too much in um, animation and try and see if we can get that and get something that looks that's working well that's got a fun idea behind it talk a little bit about the creative process do a little bit of uh, instruction and learning and how to if you've never used these programs or anything like that um, but if you have any questions or comments or ideas or thoughts or concerns or any of that kind of stuff definitely throw it in the information below I try to get back to anybody who messages me as quickly as I can and I'll definitely try and help you out if uh, if I can but that being said I'm rambling a whole bunch so let's get into today's video and first thing I always try to do is create a polygon primitives cube just so there's some sort of base um, to work with and now previously I was gonna do more of a belly walk but since we ended up using um, the other character with this rig which is really cool if you go under the um, character controller there's this one that says character and you can just switch this um, it's got a few different options for uh, different skins that you can kind of do like see that all seem to work with the same rig setup so I think that's really cool but anyways the original idea that I had with this character was do more of a, like a belly heavy front pushing out the belly kind of a walk uh, but since we kind of did that idea with the other one and used the long tongue and everything I thought what would be cool is you take this character it's a big character it's a large character so what would be fun and what would be different that we could do um, I had a couple ideas but since uh the last video I did went over two hours. I want to try and um, pull it back a little bit just for time's sake so that we can do something a little bit quicker. Um, so the idea that I kind of was thinking was what if we could do more of a dainty kind of a walk like where it's kind of up on the toes and maybe um, per pull the hands up and give even some pinkies or something just so that we could get a different feel than you would typically think for this character. So let's see if we can um, get something like that that will work. So before we go too far, let's get into our main, almost, uh, what they call storytelling pose. And we'll raise the, this up a little bit. Let's see if we can't do some, have some foot roll. Yeah, let's see if we got it on the toe. What about here? There we go. There's a heel. Okay, so we'll pull that up. Go ahead and uh, make sure we grab the right controller here, and we'll pull those feet together a little bit more. And let's rotate them inward a little bit. And do everything we can to make this feel uh, as dainty as we can of a giant rig model, and I think that'll be a fun idea to see if we can um, challenge ourselves to do something like that. And yeah, let's go ahead and this should be the elbow. And 
this elbow here. Now, as far as um, I like to try to anticipate uh, what might be some challenge areas or some areas that will um, take up a little bit more time with this rig. But so far, I think if we, with the more of a simplistic idea with this, um, I think the fingers might take a little bit of time just because they're um, the way that they're laid out is a little bit uh, different from how I my personal method usually is with animating them. But we'll see. That might be something that takes a little bit more. And also, I think the chest, the way that we approach the chest, we'll have to come up with a good method for that as well. But other than that, I think we should be fairly straightforward for this one. I did kind of want to push out the hips there. And let's see if we can't... Uh, let's check out the spine and see how the spine... Okay, so we want upper, mid, lower. And I think if I remember correct, it was rotate Y instead of rotate X. That was the forward and back. just want to kind of get those hips feeling a little bit more like they're further forward. So maybe we'll do that and we'll pull back the uh, chest a little bit. And that would be good for the dainty. We could put the arms out as like kind of a flutter. We could pull them in. I think the out would be nice. So we can walk like that kind of fun fun little idea and don't be afraid to look stupid for your animation to um, get up or film yourself on camera or do it really push yourselves to uh, try out different acting ideas with yourself so you can see if that's kind of an idea that would work or you can get more of a good idea on how to push those poses that you might not have just by staying directly into um, Maya itself but Maya is a great program. I really enjoy this program a lot. There's tons of things to do with it. For most of the videos that I do, we're pretty much just going to stick with um, the basic animation and not worry too much about um, rendering or getting into too many um, modeling things as well because uh, as far as what I can share with my knowledge with you guys, I'm sure there are lots of more experienced modelers and riggers and uh, particle generators and everything that, uh, that can definitely give you more in-depth uh, look at that kind of stuff than I can share with you. But again, if I do have uh, different ideas or something, I'll always try and share that with you. almost feels like he has to go to the bathroom or something like this, so we got to be careful about that, but that's okay. We want it to feel very light and very dainty of a walk if we can, but that means we all have to get the weight working well on that as well. a little bit and push that foot forward a little bit. And that means we're going to have to pull the hips up a little bit. Maybe we'll rotate them back a little bit as well. Okay, good. I want to offset the root from the hips a little bit so that we can Just pull them back a little bit more. So we want to make 
make sure that we still have a semblance of weight that's balanced here. So we'll go ahead and pull that foot forward a little bit more. Okay, and then uh, I think that uh, starting pose will work pretty well for us. Maybe we should pull those arms in a little bit more. down a little bit and see. Okay. Uh, before we go too much further, let's turn off everything and just do our NURB curves, NURB surfaces, and polygons. Let's go ahead and save our scene here. And I believe this one is a brute, so we'll just call it brute lock. For a thing, so don't be afraid when you are um, animating to save multiple versions and to save often. I'm sure I say that in all my videos, but it can't be stressed enough that that is a great um, kind of workflow to maintain to always be saving your work. Uh, let's just call it, I think I might already have Zombination Brute Lock, just to make sure. And we'll save that. Ch -ch -ch. Give a second. Okay, now that we got everything, I feel like we could maybe pull those up a little bit more. Just see if we could push this pose a little bit more as well. I think a side view for this one isn't going to be the best because so we might do like a three quarter kind of a view because just at side it's not going to be as strong of a pose as if we get something more like this. <laughs> Excuse me. Got the sneezes today. Nobody wants to sneeze on camera. If I had time to go through and edit these, I would definitely. No, what are they? What are they saying in like all the podcasts all the time? Oh, we'll fix that in post, and they never do. So I'll just continue that uh, trend. I'll fix that sneeze in post. starting pose to give us more character to start out with. So when we're, when we're focused more on the mechanics, we'll still have a little bit of that character bleeding through all that. Sorry about the background noise. Should go away in just a sec. Again, we'll fix that in post, I think. That's what I'll just stick with. And up. Okay. So now that that's pretty much set, let's do a little bit in the face, see if we can get a sweeter face out of this guy. Try and see if we can push out a little smile. Let's see.
<laughs> try to make him just a, like I said. I, I, sometimes it's fun with um with rigs to uh really see how much different you can take the rig, uh, a different place you can take the rig to than you would naturally think that uh, the rig would go. Oh, we got a little bit of deformation there, so we might not be able to do that. So let's see if we can't just pull everything up a little bit more. Puff on this cheek. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Not how to translate X, it's optional either. Okay, that's fine. Just gotta go with what they give us. It's a great rig, and look, I'm really happy and really thankful that uh, they're so supportive and so quick to get feedback. Uh, to everything, it's great, and these are great quality rigs. Definitely check them out. I'm really surprised they're um, as good a quality stuff as I've worked with, uh, even paid rigs and everything that uh, from larger companies. Um, but the fact that they're putting out these rigs that and free and seem to support them really well is just amazing. It's really great. It's a great resource, I think, for uh, any sort of indie or just learning or any kind of. Um, animators out there so definitely give them a shout out give them a follow on twitter let them know how much you appreciate uh, these rigs and give them some more there's not uh, there's a lot of people using uh, a lot of older rigs or anything but not a lot of people who are using these rigs to do a lot of uh, animation these days you see tons of uh, people using like the team fortress or those kind of uh, let's switch over to 48 frames. That's what we're going to be working with. Let's grab everything, go to one, and we're going to set our key there. And let's get into actually getting the foundation movements down for this animation. Okay, so let's go ahead to 12 frames. And we're going to push the hips forward too. And we want to kind of keep the spacing about even between the steps. So we'll scale those back, set what we have at 12, put that forward to 24, adjust the hips as well. And we gotta really make these hips bouncy and have some weight. So we still want them to feel, I mean it's a heavy character so we can't bypass the fact that it's gonna feel heavy, but if we can try and get some lightness into it without it feeling floaty is kind of the goal of that. And that's what we'll mainly sell in our uh, up and down positions with this character. So that's something we have to be aware of to look forward to. Really, we might have to spend a little extra time selling that. It would really help for this walk to get off the ground. Okay. One thing that I was kind of thinking, um, since we're using the viewport 2.0, I was thinking that it might get a little bit of lag in here, but it seems like it's pretty straightforward, which is great. It means that it's uh, really a good quality um, rig, that it's built really well. Because a lot of times there are these really great um, rigs that you can get that are really in-depth and really with a lot of detail. But because of how they're made and the way that they're made, the detail causes them to lag a lot. Um, when animating because there's just so much information there um, but the nice thing about these rigs is that they're really nice rigs they're not too basic they've got a lot of detail in them but they still um, are very uh, able to be animated well and don't ha have that uh, that bit of lag that you uh, that I would kind of expect with a, a high quality rig like this we're just kind of going through and making sure our steps feel like the weight is in the right place. Okay, let's see. 
And again, this is just the foundation for the lock. We just want to make sure all that's working. And that seems to be all right. So let's go ahead and put in our passing positions here. Uh, so we're going to go into this foot, make sure we have uh, our down positions keyed there. And let's raise that foot. side here. Let's go ahead and raise that up. And put it back down. And we'll go ahead and raise that up. And then we'll put it back down. Right. Let's get into the hips and let's do a little bit of up and down on those as well. And down. And what we'll probably do is we'll offset the up and down a little bit more so we'll delay it by about two frames is what I'm thinking. So that we have that down position that hits not at the same time that our contact position is going to be on the foot. I want that to be delayed for this one a little bit more. Sometimes I'm okay with it being on the same frame but I feel like for this one the weight should feel a little better if we delay it a couple of frames. So let's get into the translate Y that's going to be the up and down on the hips in the graph editor here. If it's going to not get stuck here. One thing that I... Bear with me a second here. Uh, one thing that I usually do, since I have two monitors, I've talked about this in the past, is I usually have my graph editor just on my second monitor. But when streaming the video, uh, I try to do a lot of the graph editor stuff so you guys can see what I'm doing and follow along. But that means I have to move it back and forth between one screen and the other so that you can follow along in the viewport and in the graph editor. Occasionally I forget to pull it up. <laughs> so. And that's not a euphemism for anything, so don't be like that. Um, but let's see here. Now let's delay it two frames and let's watch that. So I think that's going to be about where we want it to be. Yeah, because we want that little bit of sync down after the contact position. This feels pretty good. And then let's go in and let's get, uh, push the hips over, the contact foot, and back again. And we wanna, I think we're going to do extra sway and everything in the, in the buttocks as well. Translate X, zero that out. And let's go into the translate X here in the graph editor, and let's polish that guy up a little bit more. If you uh, didn't know what I was talking about earlier, um, with this rig, when uh, I had attempted to use it and switched over, um, there were a couple of little vertexes that were sticking out um, versus the other, and they were just kind of pulling out from the uh, geometry. And that's what they went in and fixed already in such a quick response, and I didn't even... And that was great. I think that's so great that there's... Um, but they're, they're so supportive. I'm really surprised with, um, I feel sometimes like the, uh, there are some resources out there for kind of indie animators or, uh, but most of the time, um, a lot of the really high quality rigs, um, either are few and far between or behind a large paywall. And there isn't, you know, they're either from a couple years ago or there'll be, you know, like one version of it and everything. And the, the fact that uh, this company is doing that, I think it's just awesome. It's just great. I haven't seen another rig um, set up uh, like they do from any other um, company that they put out for free and have so much support. So, world zombination folks, check out these rigs. They're great. They've got tons of detail and very high quality. Sway in the 
the same one. We'll just hit. And then we're going to go ahead and do um, some rotate to favor the forward planted foot step. So it's going to be rotate Y there. And Y there. And we're probably going to have to scale this down a little bit. And uh, one of the things, just kind of getting back to what we were talking about a second ago, just while I'm polishing up this curve, um, there are some great rigs from uh, people that, that uh, like the Long Winter Studios, those rigs, at least from what I've used of those, those are those are amazing. The Animation Mentor rig, the Anim Ghoul um, rigs are really great. Uh, but for, for the stuff that I do on YouTube, I try to focus on just what's available um, for free. That you guys can grab and try out yourself so that you could kind of follow along and learn a little bit or try out your own ideas and share them it's kind of the goal behind this series is to try and make that because i don't think uh, at least when i was first uh, learning stuff that there was any kind of resource that was like that so i try to make that available um, so hopefully you guys enjoy that and if you do remember to throw some thumbs up on the channel and let me know what you like or dislike or want to see more of or less of too i always appreciate any sort of feedback positive or negative it helps me make a better channel um, so that there's more resources out there for early animators or people who uh, are doing a lot of home animation and just want to feel like there's a uh, another buddy out there in the trenches with yeah uh, learning and growing as an animator as well try see if I can get like a real pointed toe on the passing position so let's see if we can't do that let's, uh, forget that the rotate X and Y are different on this rig versus the usual so we'll do two frames. I don't know if that's going to do a toe flop on this one because I want it. There shouldn't be too much, but there should be a little bit of overlap, I think, still. It might be too much, though, so let's see. Let's just go in and let's just pull up that value a lot, because it just a little bit. A little goes a long way um, for this idea. It's going to help keep it alive a little bit more so we definitely want to throw that in anything that will help um make our character feel like it has that illusion of life is definitely something we want to throw in there As I can see right now, we might have to lift that foot up a little bit more because we got some intersection with the ground. So that's something we're going to have to be aware of going forward. Uh, but one thing I said that I wanted to do that I didn't get into doing was to um, scale up the rotate Y on those hips a little bit. I think that's just a little too much. And you could see that um, with the knees and how they were uh, pulling in and out too much. And I didn't want to as much of that. Let's go ahead and save our scene here since I think we're at a fairly good part. We got the, a lot of the hips working and getting the feet where we want them to be. So I just want to save there so we don't lose that stuff. And let's get into that toe. Drag that toe over the back. And let's zero it out here. And set our key there. Bad Casey. And let's raise that toe up. And give us two frames and we'll set it back down. Get a little bit out of there. 
Let's go ahead and watch those videos. I'd almost like to raise those up a little bit more, but I think like for at least the pose that we're going with, we might have to go um, so we don't want to get too much of the knee up into that chest, uh, even though I wouldn't mind a little more space in there. But you kind of have to go with an animation that's going to work for the character that you have, and this character has little tiny legs, so we kind of can't do too big of uh, steps, at least with keeping with this pose idea. Okay, now that being said, let's get into doing some of the spine here. So I got the upper, the mid, and the lower. And let's go ahead and do a little bit of rotate Z. And a little bit of rotate Z this way. And this way. We might have to scale this down a lot as well, but we'll start off. We can always go big and then scale back. If it always actually works better for me than doing up the push in a little bit. a little too much. So we'll go ahead and go into our graph editor here. And we'll take those values and we'll pull them down to a little below one for right now. And then one other thing that I've talked about before, but I want to make sure that, especially for more beginning animators who are watching these videos, um, you see my work in the graph editor. And uh, don't be too concerned about the exact values. I know when I was um, first learning animation, uh, like I would watch someone do a video and I would try to mimic my graph editor to be exactly like theirs. And I would see like, uh, let's say on this frame, my rotate Z is at 1.442. So I would go in and in mine and mimic 1.442 thinking that was the way to animate. But it's more of a feeling and you really want to get into, um, even though you want polished curves. And again, these are, these are pretty loose um, graphs. If I was doing the more of a finished work and everything would be on ones or twos or threes maybe at max would be the space between not necessarily fours and sixes but we want to keep a good workflow going but just be uh, be aware that that's not something you need to worry about you just want to get the feel of it you want to get uh, you know what's on screen is what matters rather than the curves and the graph editor itself because the graph editor is a tool to get better animation rather than a formula for getting your animation working right and I don't think that when I was first learning that that was something that was really taught or explained um, to me so I want to make sure and, uh, and and emphasize that the graph editor is important and uh, a lot of people like um, I believe it was Victor Navone who was one of uh, amazing Pixar animator who I get to take a couple of classes um, with uh, he does a lot of his animation in the graph editor, you know, like he'll put in, um, and this is from memory, so don't quote me on this, but uh, he'll put in a couple of his key poses and breakdowns and in-betweens, and then even he'll go in and he'll, like, uh, duplicate his his uh, curves and then try to get, like, what would maybe be in, you know, a key here, key here, key here, key here, do a key there, a key there, and a key there, and just mimic his curve so that it would mimic where those initial key positions are and it comes for some really fluid animation so that's definitely um, you know don't tell, get me wrong the graph editor is very important but you need to kind of understand the the thought processes behind the graph editor that it's not a real mathematical editor you're not going in and getting these values to make sure that you know that x value is at 0.122 and the y value is at 175 you know you want to get the feeling on the screen and the feeling behind it and the exact values are not super important as long as the feelings there all right that's starting to work okay right, we can do a little bit of compress and stretch out oh, oh, there so let's do a little bit of rotate uh, I think I was rotate Y at that so. No, it's rotate X on the hips and then Y on the chest. So let's straighten out there and squash back. And this will give us a little bit of compression and a feel that there's um, a little bit of like meat in the belly and it's not rigid. So by doing a little bit of compression 
And compression, I think, is different than squash and stretch, because squash and stretch is more about volume change of shape. Uh, where, you know, like, uh, do I have that squishy ball over here somewhere? Uh, squash and stretch is more about, you know, pull it up, and then when you squish it down, but it's all the same volume. Compression is more of, uh, like, this kind of a thing rather than a complete volumetric change of shape. And sometimes I'm not as eloquent as a visual aid would be, so I hope that that explained that idea better than uh, I was doing verbally. Sometimes I find visual aids are very helpful for me rather than just hearing it, so I hope that. If you didn't understand why those were different, let me know in the comments below, and I will definitely talk to you more or I can probably link to a more eloquent uh, uh, experienced uh, teacher about why the difference between those two. Okay, so let's go ahead and stretch out the chest and we'll squash it down a little bit. Oh, there's a little bit of lag there. Why is that going? Switch that up here, so I gotta be careful here. Rotate Y, rotate Y, rotate Y. I think we got too much change here. And that'll make it feel jerky or too bouncy or something, so we wanna clean that up a little bit more. And again, uh, remember that with all of these animations, I do try to do them at a, a higher level. Um, but this is going to be kind of the start for where give yourself a good starting point, kind of beginner intermediate um, animation. For really polished stuff, I kind of have a little bit of a, a different approach after you get the foundational stuff built in. But it's more about trying to do something um, where there's an element of teaching, an element of spontaneity, um, being consistent with uh, overflow and delivering stuff. So I hope you guys uh, enjoy that. Okay, we got a little bit of bounce in the chest, now it's feeling pretty good. Now what should we do with those arms? Let's give them a little bit of a swing. Just a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and save our file, control S here. And let's go ahead and do just a little bit of back and forth on those arms. Instead, we'll do, do one of these where the arm goes out, and then back down, back out, back down, back down. But there's a little bit of sway to the arms, so I really feel a little hippish. And by hippish, I don't mean like hip, like pop. I mean like Use, using of the hips. And let's delay him a frame. Maybe two. Let's see. some elbow here. We don't want the radius, we want the elbow. Come on, grab okay, the elbow. There we go. And then we did those on 12s instead of on the 6s so that um, 
the, they kind of follow the movement of the shoulder or the uh, forearm. And that feels pretty loose there. And let's go ahead and grab this guy and we'll do the same thing. So it should be all. Okay. Keep grabbing that radius instead of the. Uh, but we'll go ahead and delay that one frame from what we had on the uh, we had the elbow working on 12 so we'll do this on 13 And if you're worried, like if you're watching this um, video and uh, you're fairly new to uh, animating and you're like, you know, I watch it and halfway through the video you're like, okay, this all looks fine. Why, why are you still tweaking this? Or how did you see it or know to do that? Or um, like, why are you seeing that? But I'm not seeing that. Uh, now that granted, you know, like I said, I'm still growing and learning along with you guys. I'm not saying I'm super best top notch that ever was. Um, but a lot of that stuff will come with uh, more and more and more and more getting into Maya, getting into watching more animation, um, getting in and frame by framing some of your favorite shows and do it over and over again so your eye gets so sensitive that it can pick up when something's hitting too hard or when there's a little blip in a, in a knee pop or when something doesn't feel right and you need to kind of look at it with um, that. But, so one of the things that I really suggest doing as if you're like first learning this or even if you're just still not necessarily where you want to be yet in your animation is to not beat yourself up but just go ahead and give yourself a little bit of time, pause what you're doing, watch it. Uh, one of the things that I do with a lot of um, the animation that I really, you know, that isn't like two hours on a shot and then post it, but where I spend, you know, something, I spend a week on two weeks or something like that for a short, it's, um, you know, I'll do some work on it for an hour or an hour and a half. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll save my work and I'll do a play blast and then I'll export it and put it on my phone and then go outside and uh, get some coffee or uh, get something to drink or get something to, you know. Uh, I want to say smoke, but for some reason I feel like I shouldn't advocate any of that, but occasionally I do do that as well. And just something, uh, a cup of coffee soda, whatever it is that's your kind of relaxing beverage or, or uh, snack of choice or whatever that kind of mellows you out and gets you to a point where you're not in work mode and um, get a notebook and have the, you know, the animation you're just working on your phone and A, it being on a smaller screen, it gives you a different visual uh, area to look at your stuff from, which will change your thinking because you're not looking at a big screen, you're looking at a small screen, so you'll be, some of the things you might not see, some of the nuances, but you'll be able to see the overall shot in total as a whole, which will give your mind a different way to look at it. And also you'll be in a different mode, 
yourself. You'll be, you know, I, I usually try to go outside, like physically just sit outside with my phone, get a drink, get a snack, get something. So my mindset's different. I'm outside breathing air, looking around, hearing the birds. And then at that point, you kind of get your mind into a different way and a different approach to your shot. And I usually bring a, a notebook down with me. I watch my shot and then every time I watch it, I try to write one thing down that I don't like or that I think isn't working or that I could push further. And I do that and I try to at least write down uh, like seven things that I, that I think are, this is what I can see that I couldn't see before or that I just didn't have time or wasn't giving myself the energy to do. And I think that's a good um, practice. At least it helped me a lot when I was um, really struggling. And like I said, you know, there's definitely tons that I can do to improve my work. And that's one of the reasons that I do um, try to do, you know, videos every day and share them with you guys and everything is to, sh one, maybe um, give you a sense of, uh, like, inspiration to, uh, you know, if there's somebody out there that's doing that, you know, I could do that. Definitely. If I can do this, you guys could do this. I was going to do that back on sixes, but I think we'll go on fours, and then that'll be 16, and 28. We're just doing a little bit of overlap and everything in the fingers as well. Like I'm saying, you know, just keep at it. Keep, uh, stay confident, stay inspired, stay motivated. It's going to be a key to uh, success is to not give up and not let, you know, your insecurities get you down or your, uh, you know, I can't do this, everyone's better than me, get you down, but just keep trying every day. And I think that's the key is to, you know, not never give up whatever it is your dream is if you're a web designer if you're a photographer if you're a painter whatever it is try at least you know at least give yourself oh, it's gonna be too busy at least give yourself like an hour a day you know to put towards whatever it is that you want to be in life and you want to do otherwise I mean is it really something that you find important I don't know I would challenge you to continue to try to do your best every day and to keep pushing forward. I think that might be a little too busy, but we'll see. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take everything that's on this finger, and we're going to push it forward a frame so that it's kind of leading the movement. I usually like to lead with the index and follow with the pinky. I find that gives a good variation um, so that there's a little bit of differentiation. I do want to do this one a little bit more. And with that, I mean, we'll maybe delay it a frame. Yeah. Or change it up. It's just, it's too much of that same shape. Yeah, let me know down below um, like what were some good exercises that you tried for yourself or that helped you um, you know, get a different view on your work or push your work further or get you to the next step as you are learning and everything too. Because I think that's um, kind of something that doesn't really, I mean, people will just say like, you know, keep working at it, keep going, keep doing hard, you know, keep trying every day, keep being motivated. But sometimes, like I said, with the, uh, you know, taking a break, stepping back um, from everything and going outside and, you know, changing your surrounding and everything, that, that was one thing that really helped me and, you know, making it a point to force myself to continue to look at stuff even when I was kind of satisfied with that. To force unsatisfaction with your work um, so that you can push it to the next level. Okay, might be a little 
too much, but we'll go ahead and we'll grab all of the uh, mid and tips and mid and tips and mid and tips. We'll delay those a frame. We'll grab all of the tips. finger and we'll push it forward a frame so that it leads and take the pinky and we'll delay it two frames just so it's not exactly the same as the other hand here let's go ahead and watch it now and I think we can play up the uh, mids a little bit more. I don't feel like they're bending enough. Downward should be these positions. I want them to curl in just a little bit more. I just don't ever feel like we're getting that bend there, which is important to loosen stuff up. Just uh, start at the root, and that would be the rotate uh, Z on there. It's kind of strange that they go from uh, rotate uh, to like a, f a mid and a tip instead of having like a base and a mid and a tip, but I understand it. It's kind of different. Not a lot of rigs are that, that way, but that's okay. So we're just going to take all that movement and we're just going to squash it in a little bit. chest on this character. It's really bulky. It looks almost like a, a, a chicken breast kind of a, a feel to it. Like a, one of those over-pumped, uh, steroided out chicken breasts. It's very cool. I like this rig a lot. They did a great job with it. And let's do a little bit of a tilt to the head. Is there a neck controller as well? I think it's just the chest. We'll see. I don't want too much, I kind of like keeping the head where it is, but I need a little bit of movement in there so it doesn't feel. It'd be kind of cool if they had a little controller for those little uh, things on the top of his head too. Or maybe for uh, those spikes sticking out of his chest too, you would like, I don't know, squash or stretch those, that'd be kind of There might be too much mid now in these fingers. Mid, mid. So let's go. And let's scale all that back a little bit more. And let's go watch that. Yeah, pretty well. And maybe a little bit of uh, let's see what it would be. Rotate X. No. I think it would be rotate Y. There's 
like the curl here. Just a little bit of give on that thumb, just so that it didn't pixel lock kind of to that same spot. And there's already enough movement throughout the hand that we don't want to do a ton, but a little bit of movement on that thumb would help us a lot better. So let's see. Yeah, that works a little bit. Like I said, it doesn't need to be a lot, but just a little bit of movement there. We're just gonna kind of over exaggerate what we have already on the root controller. And then we'll just delay it a frame and that'll vary things up just a teeny bit. Now again, we don't wanna do too much with this because I feel like it's already got a lot going on. And I gotta push that down again. But just a little bit and then if we offset it by a frame or so, that'll help uh, give a little more life into those hips. But again, if we go too far, it'll pull away from what I feel like is already working pretty well. So I don't need to do a lot here. And... I have a favor. The front placed foot. So it adds that extra delay on the hips a little bit more from the root. And I think in honor of it being a more dainty block, let's save our file here. And let's uh, create a polygon primitives cube here. Create a little background for him. Rotate it a little bit. Pull it out. Make sure we still got a pretty good camera angle to work with. And then, like I said, uh, we'll save our file here, but in honor of it being more of a dainty block, let's give him a pretty pink kind of a background here. So we're going to assign a new material. We'll do a uh, Lambert here and go into color. And let's find a nice kind of a pinkish color. Let's turn our nerve curves off, zoom in a little bit, and let's go ahead and watch that now. So it's a nice brute block. <laughs> yeah, I think that works pretty well. Let me know down in the comments below if there are things that you would have done differently or things that you more uh, 
ideas that you have or fun things uh, that you would have tried with this one. Um, let's take a quick look back at uh, a little bit of that stuff we were reading from uh, Ward Kimball today. Uh, if you can animate almost as fast as you think, and that what you learn in one picture doesn't necessarily work in the next. And those are um, a couple of interesting ideas to go with and try and get a sense of spontaneity in your animation or whatever um, field it is that you're working with. Try not to be too rigid and too um, stuck in your ways, but try and think outside of the box and be open to new ideas and just trying whatever it is that comes to your mind. Maybe it's not your million dollar idea, or maybe it is, you don't know. Um, and then the things that you've done in the past don't always translate to the work that you're currently working on, so don't be afraid to change up your workflow or change up your environment or uh, get out of your comfort zone. That being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. I always appreciate it. If you do like it, go ahead and throw me some thumbs up and let me know in the comments. Uh, if there's things you want to change or other ideas you have, definitely throw those down below too because I'm open to trying different things with this stuff. I just want to share this wonderful... Um, field of animation and creativity with you guys and hopefully that you can learn something or at least feel like that you have a buddy in the trenches with you so subscribe to the channel um, and keep working every day keep pushing yourself keep trying to get a sense of uh, spontaneity a sense of moving forward in whatever field it is and keep trying new things that being said you guys have a great day check out all of these great uh, new world zombination rigs i'll link to them in the information below and we'll see you for some more animation